Sorry. I got mm -hmm. it. Step through this thing because it actually mm -hmm. holds it to the bottom of the tank there. Okay. Although we can't see the bottom of the tank. Ooh, this is gravity, cool. just like you do your gas tank when you're trying to get gas. All we're doing is we're creating a flow. Except don't do that with gas. Yeah. <laughs> thing here so it sits on the bottom. But like Dave said, you don't have to suck on the thing to get it to pull like that. You just actually submerge the cord, put your finger on it, and pull it over the side, and it takes it with it. I just wanted to see what the water tastes like. <laughs> Blooms it, that's what they eat. So they're self-sufficient in there. I don't even need to feed them. They're eating the algae that's growing from their own waste product. Pretty amazing, you know? And so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna scrape some of the algae off, take the water out. We want a clearer environment in there. We'd rather feed them. What we wanna do is take the sun off the tank, so that we don't have algae because I want this to be a breeding tank but I also want it to be a display tank. This will be filled up with uh, uh, that Nilotikus hybrid male and two different types of Mozambique purebred and the cross crossbreeds in here. We don't need to necessarily keep track of everyone that's going out because I have isolated tanks already and then we'll be able to see the different batches that come out of the fish. So we'll have both of those as display breeder tanks um, and then our fry will come in here. In here we have uh, our fingerlings of tilapia. They're using the bathroom. We're feeding them and they're eating algae in the tank. They have to use the bathroom. That's in the form of uh, nitrites um, and nitrates and ammonia. What's going to happen is that water pumps out of here into the black line there. It pumps to this side of the um, reservoirs up here and it goes by gravity back down to the other end and it drains into this tank. As it passes through here, there's a bacteria that's growing on the side of here, several different types of bacteria that are actually filtering and changing the ammonia and nitrates, nitrites into nitrates so that the plants can actually use it as nitrogen and attain their green growth with it. So basically it's going from here into there, down these, the roots are taking some of the ammonia and nitrates and using it to grow on. Then it's dropping into here, what we call a biomass tank. This is taking the rest of it out, so the water that's coming in here, if you were to test this water, and you can actually see a little bit of the difference of the clarity just in my hand here slightly. Um, if you were to test this water that the fish are pooping in, that has nitrogen in it, by the time it comes back here, the nitrogen here is going to be a totally different level from the nitrogen that's in the tank. And so that shows that it's filtering it. The idea of a biomass pond is, here it is. Every week, we're going to pull some of this out, and we're going to feed it to our earthworms. And that's what we mean by a biomass. A biological mass of compost, basically. And so, within a few years of doing this, or in a few months of doing this, we could cover the entire property with water hyacinths that's going to be taken back into the ground. Since it grows in the water, there's a lot of... Um, water insects that shed their skeletons as they shed. That's a lot of calcium. There's a lot of minerals and micronutrients that are found in an aqua environment that aren't found in a land environment. Yeah, that's a spider in there. That, that's a little water spider. He lives in the water hyacinths there. He also, when the lights bring bugs to the tanks, the ones that the fish don't eat, the little life that lives in, in the water hyacinths will eat some of them as well. So we grow our biomass because it filters the water and we also have something to feed the earthworms that we're gonna turn into dirt. These are our plants, our biomass. <coughs> With your worm bin? Oh uh, yeah, let's throw them in a, a worm bin and feed some of these worms in. Okay. Now in this bin, we have shredded newspaper and water hyacinths. And you can see how we've thrown some water hyacinths in there previously. And if you look in here, Here's the earthworms. This dirt that you see in my hands, this is newspaper and water hyacinths. They've turned this into dirt. This is a pure whole fertilizer right here that we're gonna grow our vegetables in. This is how we do it in a bin, in a contained environment. So you wanna hand me some of those? We're just basically gonna throw some of these right in here just like that. Boom. That's it. Our worms are working for us. They're gonna turn that into dirt. That's what our biomass does. They're a pretty plant too. They're yeah, they're a water. Water plant. Um, so is that ink okay for the worms, like on the newspaper? It's soy-based soy. ink, Maui News. Oh, okay. Most newspaper companies have switched to soy-based ink. 
so that's kind of important and that's why you want to be careful with what kind of papers you're yeah. going to compost what kind of glues in them and what kind of inks are in them yeah. like i say most newspapers are pretty solid because most newspaper companies do such a high volume but they, they have no choice but to switch from lead-based inks to soy-based inks because cool. the environmental protection agency and if you look right here here's the same thing in the ground Oh, nice worm. This is the red worm fatida. Uh-huh. What you see that looks like dirt here is actually the same thing. It's coffee grounds, newspapers, and water hyacinths all piled up here. All the compost of coffee grounds that we have there, these guys, as they breed and that cools off, are going to move into that and eat it. That's what we're going to be filling our boxes with. So a lot of people wonder how what we're going to be growing. We're making our dirt to grow in instead of putting something in the ground and sucking nutrients out of the dirt that's there. We're going to be making everything we grow from the bottom up. So our process isn't fast, but when you see the vegetables that are going to come out of it, already you see tomatoes that just volunteered. You don't see any fruit fly on them. You, they're, they're healthier. Why? Because they're growing with worms and worm castings. They've never seen any fertilizer or nothing. That was just a seed that fell down by the edge of the compost. So they're, they're living off the compost and the worms, but if they also have a stronger immune system. healthy plant sends off like a neon sign, a signature that it's in distress, which uh, just like a lion is going to attack a weak wildebeest before it attacks a strong wildebeest. It's the same exact thing. The stronger our plants are, the less likely the pests we have in them. So that's how we want to manage and balance what we got going on here. We're trying to work with Mother Nature as much as possible. And so we're not bringing any, any pesticides. Or I should take a little bit more of the soil out of this one because the basil has a bit of soil on it. We're going to stick the basil right on the top like that. And we're going to throw just rocks without so much coconut husk since we do have a little bit of stuff in there already right around it and support it. What about using peat moss? Uh, peat moss sometimes holds too much water but peat moss can be used and it can be used in a lower number. Wow. It's not that different from coconut husk. Yeah. The thing is you want your numbers pretty low. I still think we're actually too much soil and coconut husk in this. Our mix isn't high enough rock to soil yet, even in here. We want predominantly rock. We want like 75% rock. rock in that? No, this size rock works and it lets a lot of air out, but it would be nice if they were a little bit more uniform in smaller, size, yeah. one size smaller. This is like two inch base rock. Yeah. What we need is half inch base rock. Mm. You guys can pass that around and try it if you want. Oh yeah. Oh. It's peanut butter. So exactly, that's why they eat the root out of this one. But this is where celery comes from. Celery in nature, this is what it is. What we've done is we've hybridized it to get the bitter out of it, basically. Mm -hmm. But this is way this is way more healthy than celery ever was. So I was told, I found out today that celery is good for your bones. Yeah, it has quite a bit of calcium in it. This has probably 10 times the amount of celery, of calcium. Celery actually doesn't have that much calcium in it at all, as we know celery. When they talk about the statistics of what it has in it, it's usually based around this, where it got hybridized from. This has a lot more nutrients in it than celery does. So, but it is exactly what celery is and where it came from. So these things will get big, actually, like this, and have big roots on them. So we're just going to take this along with the small ones, and we're going to plant a bunch in the berm around the water line down there.